Well, I'm super excited to be here at the ALSO event where they just unveiled the TMB and their quad vehicle. And luckily I have Chris here, who is the president and co-founder of the brand. So Chris, congratulations. Thanks for having us here today. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Let's start off from the beginning of the brand. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that you call this a micro mobility brand or that there is, yeah. you know, smaller than cars. Yeah. There's a lot that you can go into as far as those smaller forms of transportation, whether it's scooters or electric skateboards, or even go up into the higher realms of yep. mobility with EV tolls. So yep. can you talk about like the scope of where also is going to head? When RJ and I talked about the potential yeah. with also several years ago, our vision was really a broad one, which are, there are all these modes. And if you think about how people move around, whether it's commercial or personal around the world, the dominant modes of transportation today are actually things that are smaller than a car. Just like you said, there's all sorts of different shapes, number of wheels, but they're all smaller than a car. And the rate of electrification in these modes is really, really low today. And so it turns out that whether it has two wheels or three wheels or is a very small four wheeler, there's more in common across all these smaller than car modes with each other than any of one of them to a car. So once you get a car and highway speeds and crash standards, there's a different engineering and physics ball game. And so by optimizing and developing this platform for our initial products, TMV and TMQ, that allows us to very quickly scale into all these other modes that uh, some of which you pointed out. Yeah, well, I can't wait for the future for more of them. <laughs> Me too. But obviously it's called TMB yeah. and the quad is TMQ. Yeah. So I'm guessing the TM is the Transcendent Mobility yes. Tag. Yes. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about that naming scheme and what that really means? Yeah, transcendent mobility, um, we kind of landed on those two words because once we said them, it's almost the perfect two wor words that encapsulate what I hope you're, you're about to feel when you demo the product, but what everyone feels when they hop on TMB or TMQ, which is this completely different and transcendent experience that's beyond just riding a slightly more powerful bike in the case of an e-bike. And so for us, it's this notion of how can you kind of transcend all the pain points of existing smaller in the car modes, but also cars like traffic, parking, and things like that. Can you just talk a little bit about your experience and then what yeah. it means to come to this point right now with this very software forward vehicle? Totally. I've had a lot of years of experience in the kind of e-bike space. And that space is just like traditional automotive. You have OEs and tier one suppliers and some great products come out, but the same limitations exist and the same opportunity exists that say Rivian was able to introduce in the EV car world. And so what we're really excited about with also is by in-housing really everything down to the boards and the bare metal firmware and the integration of all these different modules, hardware and software, is we can reimagine what the fundamental product proposition and ownership experience is without any constraints of what's available in the market from suppliers. Mm -hmm. Now, you have showed off a bike and a quad, so do you see the consumer side taking off a little more, or do you see the commercial side being yeah. the bulk of the business? The opportunity is almost evenly split between commercial use cases and consumer. We see this huge wave of adoption of people just wanting and clamoring for something that is just more fun, more efficient, easier to use than a car for a subset of trips. And so adoption is taking off, and we think with kind of like a ground up experience, it can catalyze even more with something like TMD. But also we've talked to so many different commercial partners that we know that the need for something smaller than a van in that case is almost more acute than anywhere else because all these operators know beyond the cost of the vehicle and the cost of operation, it's really a question of throughput. I mean, there's so many metros around the world, Paris being one of them, that are closed to cars and vans. So you can't even serve customers in these metro areas without something different, smaller. In other places like New York, they're not yet closed to vans and cars um, and SUVs, but it's really hard to get anywhere most times of the day. And so we have so much excitement from all these different commercial uh, partners in finding a mode that's highly capable, highly software defined and connected, um, but still able to do the jobs that they need to do in these areas. And to that point, what is also great about making it on this bike platform is that you have the reduction of the you know licensing and the ease of someone to just hop on it and be able to you know hire a worker totally. much easier. So can totally. you talk about the simplification of that? Because I think yeah. a lot of people on the yeah. commercial side of the business don't realize how much that saves them, and that's oh, so yeah. important in business. Oh yeah, these um, 
pedal quads are such a wonderful, wonderful form factor because in many, many places across the US and Europe, they're categorized as e-bikes. And so they carry all the wonderful advantages of being categorized as an e-bike. And you pointed out some of them, which are, you don't have to register them. You don't need special licensing. It's highly approachable and intuitive to use. Uh, maybe more importantly than all of that is they fit in bike infrastructure. And so it's really, really to see how much more advantageous they are from a throughput standpoint. From my experience, I've reviewed over 100 e-bikes and yeah. I have seen a lot of technology in the e-bike world and tested it out. Yeah. And there are so many different bikes that I've tried that they don't quite have the culmination of everything that you're yeah. offering here. Yeah. And there's a reason for that is because <laughs> that's a big challenge yes. to bring all of that in. And yes. also for the price point. And how do you feel you will be able to compete in the market with the product that you've come out with today? Yeah, that's a wonderful question. So if you look at the products that are in the market today, and I'm guessing this is gonna cover basically all 100 that you've tried, they typically start first as a bike, a traditional bike, and that's the architecture. So you have things like derailleurs and gears, you happen to add a motor and a battery. And so it's fundamentally the same experience, just more powerful. And so by taking kind of a clean slate approach where we've in-housed everything, our e-machines are in-house, our inverters and control software are in-house, connectivity stuff, all the boards, the compute, everything's in-house. By doing that, it allows us to think, okay, what do we want the experience to be? And we build that. And so the entire product and ownership experience of TMB is, I would say, much more akin to the most modern EV experience like a Rivian than really any e-bike experience that exists on the market today. So Let's talk a little bit more about the ownership experience because yeah. one concern that I get a lot in my comments is yeah. that they want to ensure that they have a reliable service network. Yes. So can you talk about what you're doing for service and how to Amazing. make those people feel very comfortable Amazing. with their purchase? Service is such a big thing that we've spent so much time about uh, thinking about. And uh, there's actually two avenues here that we've thought about it. One is because bikes, e-bikes, are currently traditionally, they start as a bike and you add a motor, you really have the same service issues and the same service intervals as a normal bike. And so you end up, in short, having to service them a lot. Like the drivetrains break, wear out brakes, wear out. And so you're doing a lot of service. What we went into TMB with is kind of like a, a rethink of what do we want the ownership and service to experience to be? And we want it to be much more akin to, again, something like a Rivian R1 where you're not thinking about service for a long, long time. It's a very long interval. And so we've engineered and designed it to really automotive standards and service interval expectations. And of course, there's still wear items like tires and brake pads, and we've designed those to be highly compatible. We're about to announce an authorized service network across the country where you can take it into any one of these partners and have consumables changed very easily. And because we have really advanced diagnostics on board and telemetry, if in the unlikely case that something goes wrong, we will almost uh, assuredly know about it before you do. We're able to communicate with you that, hey, you may want to get it checked out. And we're able to communicate with your preferred service partner that, um, hey, there may be a fault and what the diagnostic steps are. Because right now with a bike, the typical experience is bring it to a bike shop and they have it for three, four days trying to figure out what's wrong and you go get it. And so it's just like a fundamentally different experience. Well, on the other side of it is the parts. Yes. You are in control of the parts with the vertical integration. Totally. So that also helps make you move faster, right? Totally, totally. Yeah. We, I mean, we were really thoughtful, again, with consumables, they're highly compatible. And so if you don't want to get tires or brake pads from us, you can very easily source them from nearly any bike shop. But really any other part of the product piece is so tightly integrated is an also component. And so we have, as you rightly pointed out, full visibility into where parts need to go to be able to support our customers. The brand has spun off from Rivian, but yeah. how close do you see that relationship still being considering <laughs> there's so many synergies? We, um, RJ and I talk about this all the time. <laughs> RJ, RJ, RJ has a wonderful analogy. He calls us kind of like two characters in the same Marvel universe. And so we are very, very tightly partnered. We share ideas. The brands have such a similar DNA and fabric. Um, but when it comes down to uh, practicality, we will kind of show up in each other's spaces because it's such a wonderful completion of the overall kind of 
transportation story for a family. You know, I do school drop-offs on a TMB, but on the weekend I want to drive up and do a, kind of like a mountain trip and I'm going to hop in my R1 for that. And so also products will show up in many of the Rivian spaces around the country and vice versa. Well, thank you for spending so much time with us, Chris. Course, yeah, we appreciate thanks for being it. Congratulations. here. Congratulations. Thank you. I cannot wait to ride it. And I think that's about what time it is. It's time to ride. Amazing.